Okay, we're gonna use a, do a couple of practice problems looking at this idea of the quantized state of charged particles. So a very specific number of electrons that get moved from one particle to another. So what mathematical representation can we derive if we think about charge state and a quantized number of particles? Well, we're going to use a capital letter Q to define the charge on an object. And if there's a very specific amount of electrons that make up that charge, then the number of electrons times the charge of an electron should give us the total charge on that object. So Q is equal to the number of electrons times the charge of an electron. All right, so let's use that relationship to determine how many electrons are on an object if I tell you that the charge on an object is equal to negative 12 nanocoulombs. Now, first, does that tell us we have an excess of electrons? or a reduction of electrons on this object? Well, the charge is negative 12 nanocoulombs, so that must tell us that it's a negatively charged particle, and therefore we have an excess of charge on, of excess of negative charge, an excess of electrons on this object. All right, well, how many? How many, too many electrons do we have on this object? Well, if you use this relationship, that Q is equal to the number of electrons times the charge on an electron, and I rearrange to solve for the number of electrons, I get the number of electron dividing both sides by the charge of an electron is equal to the total charge on the object divided by the charge of an electron. And so my total charge on the object is minus 12 times 10 to the minus 9th coulombs divided by coulombs divided by the charge on an electron, which is minus 1.6 times 10 to the 19th, minus 19th coulombs. My coulombs cancel out, and the, char the total number of electrons that I have is 7.5 times 10 to the 10th electrons. So I can use this relationship to determine the number of electrons on a charged particle. Okay, great. Let's do another example. Let's imagine that I move, let's do example number two. All right. Let's imagine that I move 8.6 times 10 to the 11 electrons from object A to object B. What is the charge on object A? So let me erase our example problem number one real quick. So I'm taking charge from object B, taking electrons from object, uh, excuse me, from object A and putting them onto object B. I want to know what happens to object A. What is the charge on object A? All right. Okay, so, hold on, all right. So we're gonna use our relationship again. Our charge on an object is equal to the number of electrons either taken away or added to times the charge of an electron. So let's just first look, look at the magnitude of the charge. So if we consider the magnitude only of the charge, the number, of course, is always a positive, a scalar quantity. We can then look at just the magnitude of the charge of an electron, as opposed to worrying about the electron being negatively charged. So I am told that the number of electrons I'm, that were moved is 8.6 times 10 to the 11th. And we know that the charge on an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the 19th coulombs. So my total charge, magnitude of my total charge 
on this object is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 7 coulombs. That's the magnitude of the charge. Is it a positively charged object or a negatively charged object? Well, the question asked, what is the charge on object A? So the charge on object A. The magnitude of charge is this. We're told that electrons move from A to B. So I'm taking electrons off of A in a very fixed amount, and I'm putting them on B. So A is left with less electrons than it had to begin with. Therefore, the charge on A must be a positive 1.38 times 10 to the 7 coulombs. What about object B? Wasn't asked for in the problem, but what about object B? Well, I've taken this very fixed amount of electrons and I've plopped them onto object B. So object B then has too many electrons than it did before, more than it did before. So it will have a negative charge of 1.38 times 10 to the seventh coulombs. And this gets back to that conservation of charge idea that we introduced in the mini lecture on charged state. So if you didn't look at that, go ahead and look back at that. But it tells us that what I've taken off of A and have put onto B means charge A is left with the same, or object A is left with the same charge amount as object B has become. All right, so two different ways to utilize this relationship of thinking about the quantized nature of charge. Good job.